Mark 3, 11. There were some unclean spirits. When they saw Jesus, they fell down and they, they proclaimed, Thou art the Son of God. They knew who He was. How can even these unclean spirits know? They knew who He was. Jesus is the Son of God. Let's be logical about that. Which comes first, the Father or the Son? Let's just be logical. Just stop right there and think. Stop. The Father, and then the Son proceeds forth from the Father. The Father had to come first. Jesus is not called the Father. He's called the Son of God. He inherits the title later, Father. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us, He will be called Father. But first He is born of a virgin. Then He dies on the cross and is raised to the right hand side of the throne of the living God. It is not till then that He can be known as one who inherits the titles of the very Father in heaven. When He came forth from the Father, He was and is the Son of God. He will always remain the Son of God. If you have a Father, He will always be your Father. You will never, ever be the same. You may be in the likeness of your parents. You may have all the same features as your parent, but you will not be your parent. John 4.24 tells us God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. He is a spirit anyways. We don't have to divide Him into two things or three things. God is a spirit. Romans 1, 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus is the Son of God and He has power. That power being that spirit. Where does the spirit come from? From the Father through the Son out to those who would receive it. And those who receive it are described in Romans 8 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So the Spirit emanates from the Father, goes through the Word of God, Jesus Christ, into the believers. It is a power that comes forth. The Spirit makes intercession for our infirmities in Romans 8.26. It searches the heart of, and the minds and makes intercession for the saints for the will of God in Romans 8.27. There is this Scripture that was inserted in 1 John 5 and verse 7. First John 5 verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This word was never in any of the Greek manuscripts. This is not original. But this was inserted 
because that's how desperate early Trinitarian teachers were of the Catholic Church to put something in Scripture about the three being one. Check any Greek manuscript. It's not there. Why would this be at? If we look at any greeting from Paul, let's take Romans 1 7 for starters. Romans 1 7. Says, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In every greeting that Paul makes, he mentions God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, or His Son, Jesus Christ. You know what's missing from this? There's no greeting from the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say, I want to greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say that. Paul never, ever, ever made a greeting like that. We can look, let's see. First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians 1 and 2, Thessalonians, and Philemon, all opening with an identical phrase to this. First and Second Timothy and Titus open with a slightly modified version of it. Second Peter, Second John, and Jude, similar phrases. Greetings from the Father and from the Son. Never a greeting ever from a triune God or from the Holy Spirit. Because that's how the apostles understood. They understood this is the beginning and early church. This is a church that we are built on. This is the foundation of the prophets and the apostles that this church is built on. And we are of the same mind. We are of the same doctrine. We did not go through the harlot and come out of her as daughters. We have existed all through the centuries from the apostles till now under persecution and martyrdom from Rome all this time. And here we are. To testify to the world that God is Lord and not trying. We are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose because we are one nation. Here to testify to the Word of God. Genesis 1 26, God did say, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Many try and say that by God saying our, he's speaking of the three. The, the, the triune nature of himself. Who was God talking to? Jesus. Of course he was talking to Jesus. All we have to do is turn to 1 John, and in 1 John chapter 1, I'm sorry, John chapter 1, in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and it doesn't say anything about the Spirit. It doesn't say the Word was with God and the Spirit was with God because God's not trying. 